Welcome to lesson 10 uh, for Geotechnical Engineering Design. We're going to discuss in, the video, in this video the, a problem related with the driven pipe in sand. So this is a, a very simple problem. Um, uh, we have a pile, an isolated pile, that is receiving uh, two forces from the building, uh, a 150 kN variable unfavorable loads in blue, 300 kN of permanent unfavorable load in black, and uh, the pile is 15 meters inserted or driven in the, in the soil, in the sand, it, and it has a half a meter uh, diameter because it's a circular, uh, a circular pile. The properties of the soils where the, the pile was driven is a sand that has two different layers because the water table is at four meters from the ground level. So the first layer uh, between the ground level and the water table is a dry sand with 19 kilonewtons per cubic meter of a uh, unit weight. And the second layer, which is from four meters to 15 meters, it is to say uh, 11 meters, uh, uh, 11 meters is the dimension of the second layer, and uh, has a, a, a saturated sand with 21 kilonewtons per cubic meter of unit weight. We have as well as a data for this problem, the beta uh, coefficient 0 0.3 and NQ coefficient equal to 60, these two uh, coefficients are dimensional and our data for this problem. And we're going to consider that the unit weight of the water is 10 kN per cubic meter as, a, as an average. So in the first place, we need to uh, recognize that the formula we're going to use to resolve this problem is the beta methods, because it's, it, it, this is the driven by in sand. So um, as you see, the formula has two terms, uh, actually more than two terms, because this is a summation. You have a couple of terms in here in this particular problem, because you will have a term for the first layer and a second term for the second layer. In both cases, because this first uh, part of the formula uh, uh, analyze or define the capacity of the pile uh, because of friction, we are going to evaluate the lateral area of the pile. We are going to consider the beta, the beta coefficient and we are going to need to calculate an average effective stress in the, for the first uh, layer in the first place and for the second layer in the second place and of course, we are going to change the area of the of the lateral of the lateral of the pile for the second layer too. The coefficient beta will be the same for the two terms that form the analysis regarding the shaft of the of the pile. We will have as well a capacity, a bearing capacity at the base of the pile that is um, evaluated, calculating the area of the base of the pile multiplied by this coefficient n q, which is a dimensional, and multiplied by the effective stress at the base of the pipe. So uh, you have to be careful because this uh, effective stress is average and this effective stress is at the base. So it's at the end of the pile at 15 meter depth. But let's start the calculation for this problem. In the first place, we need to define what is the design load we are going to use in order to compare the capacity of the pile with the design load we have. So the design load will be 300 kilonewtons is the permanent load that is affected by a coefficient equal to 1 if you check the euro code. So this remains uh, unchanged. And the second load, which is an unfavorable load but is variable, is affected by a coefficient of 1.3. This is to say you are increasing the load in 30%. So in total, the building will apply to the pile 495 kilonewtons of load and this is the load we need to be sure we are we are um, in good conditions to take with the pile after this calculation of the design load we need to start the um, calculations for the capacity of the pile and we are going to start with the shaft capacity this is capacity because the friction between the pile and the soil and we are going to start with the analysis at four meters so we are going to analyze what's happening in the first layer of dry sand at four meter, if you represent the effective stress with this triangular uh, diagram in here, you start with effective stress equal to zero in the ground level, and you will increase linearly until you reach this value at the base. This value at the base will be the total stress minus the uh, water pressure. But because the sun is dry, the water pressure is equal to zero. So the only um, effective stress you have is 19, the dry uh, unit weight of the sun multiplied by four meters is equal to 76 kilonewton per square meter. But this 76 kilonewton per square meter is at the base, as I said, and we need the average because the formula asks for the average uh, effective stress for the first layer. 
This average is 38 because it's the average between 76 and 0. As you can see in here, you can calculate this dividing 76 by 2 directly and you have 38 kN per square meter. After this calculation of this average effective stress, we calculate the skin area for the first layer, which is the skin area of the pile in, in contact with the first layer, which is pi multiplied by the diameter and multiplied by 4 meters is equal to 6.28 square meters. After we finish the analysis for the first layer, we have to go to the second layer. So at the second layer, we are going to have uh, this diagram, as you see in the, in the screen, and we have to evaluate the effective stress at the base, at the base of the of this uh, trapezium in here and at the base of the pile, which is the effective stress, which is equal to the total stress minus the water pressure. Again, for the first layer, the, the total stress is equal to the effective stress. So this is 19 times four only because it's 19 is the unit weight of the dry sand and four meters the depth of the first layer. But in the second layer, we have a wet sand. So we have water pressure. So we are going to calculate at the base again, 21 times 11, is the difference between 15 and 4. 21 is the unit weight of the saturated sun, minus 10 is the unit weight of the water, times 11 is the um, water pressure. So the whole value for the effective stress at the base of the pile is 197 kN per square meter. So this is what you see in the diagram in here. But we need the average again, because the formula asks for the average when we are analyzing the shaft of the, of the, of the pile. So the average is the average between 76 and 197, which is 137, as you can see in the calculation here. The uh, next calculation is the, the, the area of the lateral of the pile in contact with the second layer, which is again the perimeter of the circle that formed the, the diameter of the pile multiplied by 11, which is the uh, dimension of the second layer. And this is 17.27 square meters. Finally, we have to calculate the area of the base of the pile to evaluate the bearing capacity of the pile at the base, which is the um, area of the circle, which is pi multiplied by the radius square. This is 0 0.196 square meters. So we have all the, the data we need to fit this formula, and this is what we are going to do now. So we have the formula we need to use. So we have two terms for the lateral and the analysis in the shaft of the, of the pile, and we have one term for the capa varying capacity at the base of the pile. As you can see, um, in the first term, we have uh, 6.28, which is the, 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 the lateral area of the pile in the first layer. 0 0.3 is the beta coefficient. 38 is the average effective stress. 17.27 is the lateral area of the pile in, the second, in contact with the second layer. 0 0.3, the beta coefficient and 137 is the average effective stress in the second layer. In the second term, we have 0, uh, 0,196, which is the area of the base of the pile multiplied by NQ, which is 60, and 197 is the uh, effective stress at the base of the pile. Be careful because this is at the base and this is the average, remember. This is the difference between these two terms. The first term, which is a summation dependent uh, you will have as many terms as layer you have in your analysis. And the last one is the final terms where you have the effective stress at the base only, because this is uh, regarding the varying capacity at the tip of the pile. You have two coefficients in here affecting your um, terms, and these are because um, the UK National Annex you, can, you have in your tables. So for a driven pile, you have a coefficient 1.7 for the base in here and 1.5 for the shaft in here. And for any model you use to evaluate the capacity of the pile, you have a safety factor 1.4 because the, you are applying a model. This is a, an approximation. So and because it's a model, we have to reduce the capacity in 1.4 dividing these two um, terms by, uh, by this factor 1.4, as is asked by the, the Euro Code 7 and the national, the UK National Index, actually. So if we, if we run the calculation, we find that the capacity of this pile in kilonewtons is 1,345 kilonewtons. So if we compare with the low we have um, for our design, which was 495 um, kilonewtons, we see that we satisfy the code and the pile is in good condition and is able to take much more load than the load we have from the building. The safety factor for this calculation will be the um, relation between this value and this value 
and is greater than one for sure. So you can run a calculation that on the safe factor for, for yourself and see how far you are um, in terms of um, cap extra capacity of your pipe for the design load you have for this particular problem. So this is all. This is a very simple exercise. You not just need to take uh, care of, the, um, of uh, the values that you need to fit this formula. And this is called the beta method. So thank you very much.